when we set ourselves up 10 years ago, we opened the doors eight years ago, it was all about creating fans because we believe that fans are the lifeblood of how you grow an organisation. So we didn't want customers because customers take a service from you whereas fans engage with you. They'll tell you where you can be better but they'll tell you because they want you to be better not because they're complaining, they're engaging. And also our colleagues are engaged because they want us to be better. So customer experience is the heart. It's the ethos, it's the culture, it's everything we do. And therefore, everything engages with it, which makes it across the whole organisation. And that's how we drive it, that's why we do what we do. If we're going to create fans amongst our customers, we've got to start creating fans amongst our colleagues. Because our fans are the people who engage our customers, our fans are the people who make risk decisions, our fans are the people who develop the mobile apps. And so if you have fans at the heart of the colleagues, if our colleagues are fans, then by default you know your customers are going to be treated better. The things that are developed for them will be fan focused because they are fans. So from the very start, we try to recruit people, we call it hire for attitude and train for skills. So it was all about recruit great people who want to focus on creating fans and get them working with like-minded people and then get them released to go and do the right thing. And so, you know, from the very earliest days, that's what we've done. Uh, when there was four of us, uh, nearly 10 years ago now, to when there was 12, to when there was 67 of us when we opened the doors, to the 3,700 we are today. Empathy is really important and I'm really pleased that we came out so well in the surveys that were done on empathy. But to me you can't teach empathy or, or it's something your parents give you. Your parents bring you up to be a certain type of person and empathy is something that you grow throughout your life. You've got it or you haven't. So that's why we call it higher for attitude. We hire people with the right attitude, with the right behaviours and then what we try and do is allow them to be themselves. Because if we can let you be yourself, then when you're engaging with people, if you already have empathy and you're comfortable in what you do, by default you're going to give more empathy to customers, because that's just what you are. So for me it starts with recruit the right people who you know will fit the culture you want, give them the right training, get them comfortable in what they're doing, and then let them be themselves. Let them serve and look after customers the right way, by being what they are. You know, I try and get out one day a week where I'll be in contact centres, operation centres, stores, I'll go and see customers. I call them my mischief and mayhem tours because you learn. And that's why it's mischief and mayhem. And actually to me, it's we've got to be humble enough to know we're not good enough and hungry enough to know we can be better. And therefore, you've got to be willing to know you can learn uh, and listen and, and you've got to be open to that. Because it's no good having a good insights team if you are not humble enough and hungry enough. So to me it is the application of insight, hugely important, but more important is the application of um, the willingness to accept the insight and do something about it. And I think a lot of companies fail not in the insight but in the willingness to do something because they almost get defensive and justify and, and you can justify anything away. But the bottom line is, if that's what you're hearing, that's what the customer's telling you, that's the truth. I guess as the CEO of the company, I have to be at the forefront of it. My job is to make sure that we listen. And if we're not listening, I personally am at fault. And therefore, I take my responsibility really seriously. So if you look on uh, downstairs in our stores, if you go on the website and you look at the address or the, the number to send complaints to, it's directly to me. They all come directly to me. I hate it, by the way. <laughs> it ruins my day. But it's really important that everybody in the bank knows that I take it seriously. And so we work with a lot of fintechs and tech companies to leverage their technology to bring it to life for our customers to create funds. And then we become a shop window they can sell through, but our customers win and we win. So it's a partnership, it's working together. You know, innovation curves used to be three to five years, they're three to six months now. So you want to be moving and constantly trying to work with the best. Um, and that's what we try and do. Uh, in our stores we have something called M Welcome. 
and it's a predictive uh, queuing system. And it's working within, at the moment, about one minute of being right. And actually what it is, is we collect all of our rotors, all the time it takes to open whatever the account is, and it's all held in the cloud. With that, we then have all the people who are coming in, what they're asking for, and then it can, using machine learning, it's working out how fast we think we can get to that customer and how long, if I get served by that individual, it'll take them to be served. So we can tell people within a minute of how long we think they'll have to wait to be seen by somebody who can fulfill what they want. It's leveraging technology to fulfill customer needs. It's leveraging our rotor systems, our, um, uh, all of our data, but so we can just manage customer expectations better. And to me, it's the companies looking forward who can think about how to fulfill and how to create fulfillment, leveraging technology and physical integration that win.